1. Y'all, I got a story and a half for you here. Some backstory. Our restaurant has only been open for a little over a month, and the building used to be used for a friendlies, kid-friendly restaurant chain. However, the old restaurant had a gas leak. And even after shutting down for a week or so to get everything fixed, triple-checked, and cleaned, the smell remained. And it didn't help that the kitchen is very open. Anyway, they didn't renew the lease, and so we bought the location. On to the story. So a big rush comes in around 8, and I get a table of two ladies, who seem like middle-aged soccer moms who left the kids with their husbands for a girls' night, and were quite disappointed that we didn't serve alcohol. Anyway, they get sat, and within no more than 30 seconds, this is important, I come over to introduce myself and get their drink orders, but our main character, let's call her Dumbass, DA for short, is already on her phone. The other lady, O.L., orders a Coke and some mozzarella sticks, and, as I go to put all that in for her, I hear D.A. say something along the lines of, GAS LEAK! Slam on the brakes and back right the fuck up. I put her drink and appetizer order in and wait until D.A. is off the phone before heading back to the table. Hi, ma'am, I'm sorry to listen in on your conversation, but did you say something about a gas leak? Yeah, I just smelled gas, so I called my husband. Oh, is he like, uh, no, he's the fire marshal for the town. He said he'll be sending somewhere over shortly to check everything out. I'd say about five minutes. I am now in the midst of a heart attack. Oh, uh, just to be safe, you know? Oh, yeah, totally. I'm going to go check on how your food's coming along. Skirted right the fuck out of there and basically yanked my manager into the back and explained the situation. He was pissed because, as I've said, the place had been practically torn apart in an effort to clean the smell and checked so many times over by the fire department. I am pretty sure we were on a first-name basis. As soon as we both managed to take a breath, a goddamn fire truck pulls up. Lights on, but no sirens, thank God. I get out onto the floor and keep my tables calm, and assure them that it's just a routine checkup or some other bill I made up on the spot. I keep going by to check on that table, and O.L. just looks tired, where D.A. is beaming prouder than a peacock. I keep a smile on and continue to assure her that we most definitely appreciate her acting upon her concerns without saying a word to any staff member. All through gritty teeth. The guy who came, a total gentleman who knew she was just pulling the boss's wife card, looked over everything, noted that he couldn't smell anything except good food, and gave us a clean bill of approval. He walked over to the table as I was taking their dessert orders. A banana berry crepe with a uh, small vanilla sundae, and told them he couldn't find anything. Well, I tell you, that woman's face fell. I mean, it fell like the walls of Jericho. She sent her shining quote of the night, which went, I smelled it at the old restaurant, and they didn't take me seriously, so I took it under my own hands this time. She kept insisting that he was missing something and that she should just have gotten her husband to do it. But he shrugged, apologized to my manager, and left. I made some more small talk, put in their order, and continued on with my night. In the end, they paid for their own items and then split the mozzarella sticks down the middle, four checks in total. DA gave no tip and instead wrote, Fix the smell! and an angry face. But at least OL gave me a 20% tip on the mozzarella sticks, which totaled to about 98 cents. When I tell you I was fuming, I was just about ready to pop a vein. Moral of the story, if you smell gas, tell your server. It could be something serious which should be handled by the powers that be within the restaurant. Evacuating the building, shutting everything down, keeping everyone safe. Or it could be something completely explainable and safe. The guy came in with his family the next day though, and even though he felt a little ashamed after the previous night, we had a lovely afternoon and he's become a regular customer. 2. I used to wait tables at an upscale restaurant that was known for the place to have your holiday or office parties. Great money if you got the right group. The menus were preset, the wine and liquor was preset, and it was all auto-gratted at 18%. All of it was in the contract the host signed pre-event. Usually the host would make themselves known fairly early on, so you would know who to talk to if there was an issue, and who to give the check to at the end of the night. One night, I'm splitting a party of 30 or 40 with another server. This event had top-tier food and mid-level wine and booze, very nice. 
A small group of five or six people arrive a bit ahead of schedule. Two guys and three or four women, not a problem. It's actually nicer if they slowly roll in so we can get drinks started. I walk over, introduce myself and the other waiter and ask for drinks. Now this was back in the early 2000s and chads weren't a thing yet. But the two guys were the chattiest chads. If they could have popped their collars in their suits, I'm sure these guys would have found a way. Me and my bro are going to start with a round of Johnny Walker Blue. And these ladies are going to have the Shadow Picard Merlot. Once you have Johnny Blue, you just can't drink anything else. It changes you, bro. If you like, I can put those on a separate tab. The event contract has Johnny Walker Black, but not Blue. And the red wine selection for tonight is a less expensive wine. This is our event. Just get me what I ordered, and don't question me again. Who do you think you are? You're just some waiter and we have MBAs. Just get us our drinks. I walk over to the other waiter and tell him we are in for a hell of a night. But the check should be nice. For those that don't know, Johnny Walker Blue is three or four times the cost of Johnny Black. So one round of drinks for these people is over $100. The whole night goes exactly as we thought. Nothing was good enough. The appetizers were crap. The food was horrible. Not enough bread. Too many bread plates. Drinks were taking too long. Why do some people have food and others don't? It's 40 people, man. It takes a minute to get that much food out. To make it worse, Chads and co are all over the place, moving seats and making others move so they can talk to who they want. This makes serving hell because we did everything by seat number. Surprisingly, most of the table was normal, not entitled people, who knew that waiters are people too. They were impressed by the food and graciously ordered the drinks that were in the contract. One older gentleman at the other end of the table from the Chaz apologized for their behavior, saying, They might have fancy degrees and good jobs, but you can't teach class. Loved that guy. Finally, they are winding down, and after drinking almost a full bottle of Johnny Blue, along with all the other food and drinks, they have a very hefty check, and the other waiter and I are excited to get paid. We start picking up the dessert place and asking for last drink requests. The nice older guy at the end of the table says to bring him the check. Not wanting any more interaction with the chance unnecessary, I bring it to him. I tell him I can take care of it whenever and go about clearing the table. A few minutes later he calls me over. Uh, maybe there was a mistake in ringing up the drinks. There is almost $600 for Johnny Blue, when the contract I signed only included Johnny Black. And there are some single glasses of wine that are different from what we agreed upon. No mistake, sir, that was what was ordered and drank. He is being awesome and I feel bad. Why did you give the drinks to them when we clearly had a contract? I apologize, sir. They told me that this was their party and since I was just a waiter to shut up and do as I was told. So I did. I'm sorry, I took them at the word. I point them out and he calls them over. What follows was the singularly greatest ass-chewing I have ever been witness to. He goes on about how he was doing something nice, but apparently that wasn't enough. About how horrible their behavior was that night, and how he is ashamed for them. But my favorite line, was how you see a person's true colors and how they treat the people that work for them, and they had shown theirs. Then he calls me back over. Apparently I thought this was my party, guess I was wrong. This is their party, and they will be taking care of the check. Oh, and up the gratuity to 25%. You earned it. He turns around and walks off, leaving the chance with the check. All in all, it was about $3,000. I have never seen two grown men look so defeated. The boss might have been their father, it makes total sense looking back. 3. So I have been in hospitality for over 6 years now, ever since I was in my teens. Worked my way up from a waitress to a now senior bartender at a nice bistro, which works perfectly with my uni schedule. Lately though, my supervisor has taken me off bar duty and is making me section wait, which I haven't done in years, and is another long story entirely. 
Now, I'm a seasoned vet by now, and I can handle all the requests and demands and complaints with a smile, even if I'm a little rusty. But I forgot just how much being a waiter sucks when it comes to certain patrons. Maybe I blacked it out when I left my last waitressing job at 18. But how the hell can I forget how handsy some customers seem to get? I get tugged, poked, jostled. Customers get in my face to whisper their orders. People fill on back of my apron and put their hands on my shoulders. I'm lucky if I don't have at least two or three incidents per 10 hour shift. In the past week I've noticed how bad it is. Over this week I've had three incidents that really got to me. Number one, I was standing at the edge of a foretop taking orders. The tables are very close together and are hard to squeeze through. I feel a hand on the small of my back underneath my apron. I jerk around and an older man smiles and asks if he can order. I laugh awkwardly and say, just a minute. Number two, peak rush hour. Majorly in the weeds. The runner has disappeared, so the other section waiter and I are madly running food, taking orders, payment, etc, etc. I am flooring it from one end of my section to the other to quickly enter another round of drinks for a table in my point of sale. And an older gentleman sticks out his hand and grabs me by the upper arm as I pass his table. I was going so fast he actually yanked me backwards. I immediately jerked away from him and asked what he wanted. He was laughing and mentioned me speaking French to another table, and I laughed it off and tried to walk away. He grabbed my arm hard and pulled me back and berated me for walking away before he was done talking. Number 3. Four top of early 20s guys. Rowdy, already had a few in them before they got to us. Tried flirting with me while I was serving them. I pretended to be oblivious. Eventually I was taking their order. I turned around to leave and one of the guys tugged on my apron strings so that it fell off while all of them laughed. My fellow waiter got them kicked out. These are just some of the incidents. I reported everything to my supervisor, but she takes it more as me commiserating rather than wanting actual action, no matter how much I beg her to do something. I've talked to management and they tell me it's not serious assault, so there's nothing I can do. My question is, does this really happen all the time to other waiters? What have you done to stop it? Is it really just something I should suck up and get on with? 4. I work in a very popular franchise restaurant. I was recently promoted to upper management not that long ago, so I no longer serve tables, but I am on the floor a lot mingling with guests. This one day, one of my servers approaches me in the pass-through. We exchange. There's a guy in my section who doesn't want to pay for his guacamole. Well, what's wrong with it? He says it's overpriced. Oh, jeez. Well, he didn't see the price before he ordered? Well, the thing is, he hasn't ordered it yet. What? Yeah, he says he wants to speak to the manager. So I head over to his table. He is dining with his girlfriend. I ask him what's wrong. He says he's upset. He knows for a fact that he can make guacamole for a lot cheaper at home. Why would he pay this much here? I tell him that this is a franchise store and we are far below the people who fix the prices on the menu. And if he has a disagreement with how things should be priced, He's welcome to send head office an email with some feedback. He's giving me the gears about how he's the customer and he's right. And if he's right, he deserves some compensation. After he does this for a while, I ultimately have to state firmly that if he didn't want to pay for the guacamole, he just simply wasn't going to be having it today. The girlfriend was politely nodding this whole time. And despite the stink eye this guy was giving me, I said a few apologies and started to walk away. I was just beginning to contemplate giving him the guacamole. We have an online review system that sends guest concerns directly to head office. A certain number of guest concerns would negatively affect my newly acquired bonus structure. Just as all that ran through my head, I hear him say rather loudly, PRICK! I pause. More options run through my head, but I ultimately decide to be the grown-up and ignore him. I inform the server that he's receiving no free guacamole today. A while later, she approaches me again, and she tells me free guacamole guy says his tacos are cold. I'm confused as to how all the food cook times have been 10 minutes on average today. She says he wants a new set of tacos and wants to see a manager. I'm back at the table, and now he's straight up giving me shit about how rude everyone has been to him. And how dare we serve him cold food. He tells me to touch his taco to see how cold it is. 
For obvious reasons, I refuse and say, it's no problem for us to make him new tacos. I grab the plate to take it away. He grabs the plate too. Says he'll eat these too, but he won't pay for them. We order up more tacos. 911. The shrimp is out of the fryer, plated and ready to go within seven minutes. I personally run it straight to him. While I'm taking his empty plate from the first set, he is already mowing down on the new set. I tell him we're sorry for the cold food. Please enjoy. Two minutes later, server returns. The new tacos are cold. I'm livid. I say, fuck it. I write off both tacos and tell her to just build them for the girlfriend's food and get them out of here. The next day, there is a guest concern. I explain everything to my GM. She says maybe I should just have given him the guacamole. I agree. Sometimes I guess it's best to nip a small cost in the bud. One of my supervisors, let's call her Rachel, sends him back an email offering him 20% on his next bill. This is the last I hear or see from this guy. Until two weeks later. It's a Saturday night, super busy, two sports events nearby, concert next door, and UFC all in the same night. Everyone is running off their feet, but things are going fairly smoothly. And free guac guy walks in. I give everyone plenty of warning. We decide the server whose section he's sitting in isn't up for the task of dealing with him. I assign a supervisor to serve him. Today he wants a burger with yam fries. Fast forward, it's cold. We remake. Fast forward, it's cold too. Color me surprised. I write off the whole bill, including his girlfriends, and I get a more charming supervisor than myself to just go and apologize to him and see if I can avoid a second guess concern. I should add that my GM had finished her day shift and was enjoying the fights with a friend not too far away from all this action, so she witnessed everything. Of course, what should happen the very next day? A guest concern. This one is worse than the first one. Says his server put her whole hand on his food to prove it was still hot. Says the food took 30 minutes both times, and says we still charged his girlfriend after all the trauma they went through. My GM and I are gobsmacked. Head office will have a fit if we don't make it right with this guy. GM decides to call him personally. She's a super nice and understanding person, but she's headstrong. So it takes almost no time for her to go from polite GM to straight up scream arguing with this guy, who obstinately demands free food or he's going to talk to his friends in the media, and talk to corporate, and have her, me, the server, Rachel, all of us, fired. My GM essentially says, Go for it! And immediately calls our RBM and gives him the whole rundown. RBM sends out a storewide email stating this guy is banned. That very night I'm managing solo with only a couple servers and, who calls, free guac guy. I recognize his stupid voice as it feigns politeness asking for the head office phone number. I google it and give him the reception and guest feedback numbers. As I'm saying politely, will there be anything else? He launches into it with me, saying he's calling to make sure people get fired because he still hasn't redeemed his 20% coupon, and how that's a written contract so they can't ban him because he's in the right and our store needs to make good on our promise. And is this how they treat loyal long-standing customers, and how he wants my name too? I refuse to give him my name and politely say goodbye and hang up. Two hours later he calls again, polite voice back on, asks to speak to Rachel. I say she's not in right now, he asks for her number. I say, oops, sorry sir, I can't give out employee information. Surely you understand. I'm trying to annoy him at this point because when he asks the next time she works, I use the exact same tone when I reply, oops, sorry sir, I can't give out employee schedules. Surely you understand. He demands a few more times saying he has a right to this information because Rachel made a contract with him and she's legally bound to keep it. I keep repeating my annoying phrase in the same annoying tone, and I can tell it's getting under his skin. Finally, he says that we can't stop him from coming in if he wants to, and there's not a goddamn thing you useless pricks can do about it. My cool is gone. Try it, asshole. Receiver slams down. I text the RBM personally and tell him all of this. He replies quickly that if he calls one more time to tell him, and he would phone the police to report harassment. And if he comes and refuses to leave, that we should call the cops, no questions. And that's the situation up to speed. Still haven't heard from this guy. His Facebook profile picture is posted in the pass-through. 
complete with WWE watermark, in case he does come in when I'm not there. Can't wait for that showdown. 5. I'll keep this short and not bore anyone with unnecessary backstory about the type of restaurant I work in, or anything about the setup. All you need to know is that, number one, it's fairly small so I work alone with one chef, number two, it's family friendly. Number three, we have a wide menu with options ranging from $7 dishes to our most expensive $17.50 dish. Not very pricey at all. I received a phone call asking specifically for our 1750 dish, our seafood paella. It's made fresh to order and takes about 15 to 20 minutes to make. Not to mention that seafood is expensive, so the price is justified. The person I was speaking to asked if we were a buffet. We are not. I told them we are table servers and can do the paella any time. I asked if they wanted to make a reservation because of the time it takes to prepare the paella. They said no and hung up. So I went about my day. A few hours later, a family of four comes in. They sit down, glance at the menus, and then wave me over with a snap of the father's fingers. Gotta love that. The father speaks. Show me the paella. I direct him to the back of the menu where it is listed very clearly and shows the ingredients and the price. I want that. I write it down. The mother then says she wants the paella, followed by the two kids saying the same, so I confirm. So that's four paellas? You don't want to share? No, we all have paella. So I put the order in after reminding him it'll take about 15 minutes. I offered them drinks, but they just wanted water. I started getting the cheap vibe, but they ordered four paellas, so how cheap could they be? Food comes out. They love it. Dad asks if he could get one to go. I put the order in so that it would be ready when they finish. We're at five paellas now. Almost $90 before tax. I let the chef and owner know how my concerns that the family may object to the price, despite having made it clear to them. He gave me the okay to give them a 10% discount right off the bat. He's a good guy. The time comes to bring the bill, and the man's eyes go wide. I wrote out the bill so that every paella has 1750 next to it. I watch as realization hits. He opens his mouth to object, and I immediately say, The owner said to give you a discount because you ordered five of our most expensive dish, and he wanted to thank you. He was happy to hear that you enjoyed it enough to order another to take home. That shut him up. I watch as he scans every last line of the bill and settles on the tax, which was nearly $11. You added a tip for yourself? No, sir. What's this, then? The tax. Honestly, I wasn't expecting a tip at this point, but he did leave me 10%. So basically the discount we had given him. They said the food was excellent, but I doubt they'll be back. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Spinning Plates number 57. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. It is Sleepy Freezer who greets you today, currently 8.30 in the morning, and I don't think I'm going to get much sleep today, so... I'm expecting the guy to come do the annual, or it might be biannual, I should know that I think about it, uh, inspection of the, the heating and all. And I almost forgot it was today, but I checked the letter last night, sure enough it's today. And who knows what time they're actually going to show up. Uh, it could be any time after 8, it could be way later in the day. So I'm not expecting to get much sleep. So what I'm doing is I'm recording and editing all my audio, getting that prepped, so that when they finally do come, hopefully I've got most, if not all, of my audio done and ready. And I just need to actually make the videos later when I wake up. Okay, and with that I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourselves.